Hello. After uh, so many discussions and talks uh, on um, the first unit of uh, transmission and uh, distribution, I thought it's time for us to have a short quiz. Okay, so let us see uh, that in the session. And uh, I'm Professor Uma Rao from ROE College of Engineering, bringing you these lectures under the E-Sikshana program of uh, VTA. So now uh, I just have a few questions on uh, the module one, on the first module, which we have completed. So by using a guard ring, the string efficiency, what is the impact of the guard ring on the string efficiency? It increases, it decreases, it's unaffected, or it could either increase or decrease or remain unaffected depending on the voltage level at which we are using it. So we saw that there are some ways to improve the string efficiency and guard ring is one of them. Therefore, the answer is increased. The string efficiency is increased. Now, all of you at some time or the other, you will be taking competitive exams like GATE or uh, maybe for uh, UGC, UPFC, etc. So, you have to know how to eliminate wrong answers. If you know the correct answer, well and good. But if you do not know the correct answer, then you have to eliminate the wrong answers and then you, whatever is remaining from that, you make a choice. Next, suspension type insulators are uh, used for voltages beyond how much? So, they're used for voltages higher than 33K. Below that, you can use pin insulators. So we saw when we did on uh, different types of insulators, that pin insulators become uneconomical for voltages about 33 kV. Clear? So then we go for suspension type insulators. And the advantage of suspension type insulators is you can just go on adding number of disks if you want to increase the voltage level. So the correct answer is 33 kV, beyond 33 kV, we use suspension type insulators. The insulator used in dead or sharp end. So the dead end, where the tension will be very high because there, you, you, there, there cannot be a sag at the dead end. You'll pull it and hold it in the support or there's a sharp end, suddenly there's a bend. Pin type, suspension type, strain type, or any of them can be used. What's the correct answer? The correct answer is strain type, right? So the strain type is similar to suspension type. Only thing is it holds, it's placed horizontally and it will hold the wire. So it will optimize the tension. It is adjusted to optimize the tension. So wherever you have sharp ends or dead ends, etc. We will go in for strain insulators. For a 66 kV line, the number of 11 kV insulators you use is how much? So you might be tempted to immediately write six. Don't do it. Don't do it. We'll see how you can do it. So answer is five. How do I get the answer? Here you remember when you talk of a 66 kV line, 66 kV is the line to line voltage. I've told you normally in a three phase system, we all these are three phase systems. The voltage specified is the line to line voltage. But when you talk of the voltage in an insulator, it is a phase line to neutral voltage because you will have insulators in all the three lines. So it is the line to neutral voltage. So first you have to convert the line to line voltage to line to neutral voltage. So that is 66 by root three divided by 11. That's approximately four. 
So four insulators, four discs are enough. We can put one more extra for safety. Clear? Now, a string insulator has four units. The voltage across the bottommost unit is 10 kV and its efficiency is 90%. Find the total voltage. So what is the string efficiency? String efficiency is equal to the total voltage divided by N into the voltage across the bottommost disk. The voltage across the bottommost disk is the largest. So there is an unequal, unequal distribution of voltages, if you remember. So the bottommost disk has the maximum voltage and that's equal to 10. So this is a straightforward problem. 0.9 is equal to the voltage, line voltage divided by N into 10. So that will be 36 kV. Now this 36 kV into root 3 will give you the actual line to line voltage. It will give you the line to line voltage, 36 into root 3. But that option is not given here. So your answer is 36 kV. If we double the span length, what will happen to the sag? So sag is equal to W L squared, W L squared by H T. The total sag is equal to W L squared by H T. So if I double L, then sag will get increased by four times L squared. So sag will increase by four times. Next, the effect of wind pressure is more predominant on what? On the supporting tower, on the transmission line, on the neutral wires or on the insulators. It's more predominant on the supporting towers. You have seen, I've shown you how because of wind, the tower itself can collapse, right? And if you have the poles, the cross arms can just come off. So the effect of wind is more on that. The effect of ice is more prominent on the lines. It's more prominent on the lines. The sag of the conductors of a transmission line uh, is 2.5 meters. When it's uh, sag length, sorry, it's not sag length, it is span length. Span length is 250 meters. Span length is 250 meters. Now, if the height of the supporting towers is, is increased by 2.5%, what will happen to the sag? Nothing will happen. Because if you re remember the formula for sag, S is equal to W L squared by H T. So it is dependent on the weight of the conductor, on the length of the span and on the tension. It doesn't depend on the height of the tower. It doesn't depend on the height of the tower. So the correct answer is it remains unchanged. It remains unchanged. Next, effect of temperature rise in lines is two. What will happen when, you, when the temperature increases? Obviously, the sag will in, uh, increase. The sag will increase and the tension will decrease. So the correct answer is increase the sag and decrease the tension. Just give a moment, you know, increase the sag and tension. Both sag and tension cannot be increased or decreased at the same time because they're inversely proportional. S is equal to W L squared by H T. So sag and tension are inversely proportional. So obviously C and D are ruled out because both of them cannot simultaneously increase and decrease at the same time. Now temperature heats up the conductor. So obviously it will bend more. So the sag will be more. So the first answer is correct. Next, the sag of a line is least affected by weight of the conductor. This answer is wrong because sag is dependent on the weight. Atmospheric temperature, yes, because it will heat up. Ice deposition on conductor, definitely. So it is least dependent on current through the conductor. Of course, it is to some extent dependent because the current also causes heat, right? But least dependent is the question. So the least affected 
it is least affected by current through the conductor. What is the shape that is attained by the conductor when the supports are at the same height? That is the catenary. I told you. It looks like a semicircle or a parabola, but it's, that is, it is called as a catenary. Semicircle means full circle. It won't be a semicircle. There will be a slight bend. It will be like an arc. That arc is called as a catenary. What is the minimum safety factor we have to use with respect to tension? I told you safety factor of two is minimum. You can use more. But if you use more, your cost will go up. So minimum safety factor of two is to be used. So this quiz was just a recap on uh, some of the concepts we studied. Thank you. And uh, let us meet again for the next module in the next uh, 